A streak of blue. Thomas and Edward gave a splendid effort building the railway, but they weren't suited for fast mainline services. As such, the fat director purchased another engine called Henry. Although a good sort, he was prone to steaming troubles, which caused endless frustration. Due to a lack of funds, engines were loaned from other railways. One of these, known only as 87546, fancied himself the savior of the line and never failed to make it known. Fret no longer, he declared, dragging Henry and his train into the big station. For I have restored order to our timetable once more. Does he ever tire of all that hot air in his boiler? Thomas remarked to Edward. And I say, you, little one, the big engine beckoned to Thomas. Be a good lackey, take my coaches and the <coughs> indisposed away. I must rest my aching wheels. Evidently not, murmured Edward. As Thomas buffered up, Henry couldn't even meet his gaze. Oh, I'm sorry, he sighed. He should be sorry, retorted Thomas. One day, he'll get his. That night, Thomas retired to the shed. A vulgar discourse greeted him. You know... 87546 said loudly to another loaned engine. I do sympathize with the fat director. Wasted what little hard-earned money he had on a mite, an antique, and an invalid. I'm the real bargain. The strength of three for the coal and water consumption of one. Only a matter of time before he purchases me. The fat director... Edward interjected, favors engines with good character. You leave much to be desired in that department. And where has good character led you, hmm? replied 87546. Certainly not the main line. Speed and strength are all that matters there. When I pull coaches, you merely see a streak of blue. Engines like you fade into the background. I'd like to see you do my work without falling to pieces. <laughs> he turned back to the other engine. Now, a more pressing matter. When I am purchased, what do you suppose my proper name should be? I fancy something regal. Lord Frederick Regaby has a certain charm to it, no? Thomas was about to retort, but Edward gave him a look. Save your steam, he muttered. It's no use arguing with him. They stared at the loaned engine with contempt. Henry, who'd only been pretending to sleep, had heard everything. The next morning, 87546 awoke to a startling sight. There was Henry, hissing and weeshing. What the devil is this? Oh, dear. <coughs> Henry coughed feebly. Thought the men had <coughs> made me better. <coughs> well, get better and out of my way this instant. My admiring passengers are waiting. I demand extrication at once. But the other engines had all left for work. They couldn't have helped anyhow. Worse and worse, the fat director scowled as he paced the platform. 
The passengers cannot be kept waiting. I'm sorry, Edward. As the others have gone, you'll have to take the coaches. Edward gulped, staring at the long train. Uh, begging your pardon, sir, but this is a bit beyond my capabilities. Not if I helped you, bubbled Thomas, shuffling alongside. Two engines are better than one, sir. Besides, the others can manage their own shunting for a while. The fat director considered. Very well, he said at last. Off you go. Do your best, but take care. The engines backed excitedly onto the train. The passengers marveled at the strange combination, but were thankful to have any train at all. Finally, the guard's whistle blew. Come on, come on, called Thomas. Steady now, steady now, advised Edward. Soon they were on the main line and having a wonderful time. Thomas was so excited to leave the yards, he nearly pulled Edward's coupling off. Edward chuckled. He was glad to stretch his wheels again. The two engines worked so well, the coaches felt light as air. Other engines were shocked as they raced past, whistling with glee. Later, they returned to the big station, exhausted but triumphant. Henry and 87546 stood on the platform. Well, 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 smiled Henry. Our streak of blue has returned. And in one piece, no less. 87546 scowled as the happy passengers swarmed out of the coaches. What splendid little engines you are. Your director must be proud of you. He's very happy with his purchases indeed, chuckled Thomas. No, ha, ha fumed 87546 as he puffed away. You were only allowed out of the yard because clanky old Edward couldn't manage alone. Enjoy your brief moment in the limelight. It's already fading. If I didn't know any better, smirked Thomas, I'd say he didn't like shunting his own train. He chortled off to the water column, but Edward stayed behind. Are you all right, Henry? What on earth happened this morning? Oh, the usual steaming troubles. You know how it is. Miraculously, he winked, the problem seemed to vanish after you'd gone. <gasps> you didn't, Edward gasped. Now, Edward, Henry grinned, do you really think I'd do such a thing? And without another word, Henry steamed away.